This is one of the most hated cameras ever produced. Everyone and their mom seems to have a negative opinion about it. The people that have used it usually loves the thing, and I'm no exception. Here are five reasons why. Before we start, let's just get one thing out of the way. No, this camera does not shoot video. Now when you have calmed down, we can move on with the first reason, which is the price. When new, this cost about as much as any full-frame DSLR used to do back in 2013. For some reason, people expected this, a product meant for a smaller target audience, to be cheaper than usual. But like all cameras, prices have come down and I found several in great used condition costing less than for example a new Sony A7 Mark II, which was released one year later. Next reason is the size and build. It doesn't have a big comfortable grip like most DSLRs, but instead it is surprisingly lightweight and quite small. Most of it is metal and it feels very solid. Buttons and dials are very tactile. They have for example nailed the drive mode switch, which on for example the Fuji X-T2 is so fiddly that I want to cry when using it. Sadly, only one SD card slot. The proper way to hold it comfortably, in my opinion, is like a film camera, resting on your left hand so you are free to operate the manual controls. Which brings us to the next reason I love this camera, said controls. On many Nikon lenses you find an aperture ring, on the camera sits a shutter dial, ISO dial and exposure compensation dial. But unlike the ever so popular Fuji approach, they didn't go for the A setting, instead they have a good old fashioned program selector. There are positives and negatives to both types. Being able to keep for example the shutter on a fast speed to quickly switch from aperture priority to shutter priority without having to reset everything is nice, I like it. Combined with a huge bright and lovely optical viewfinder, plus the fast autofocus, it all boils down to a snappy experience. For those that want to be able to use the regular dials for let's say shutter, you of course can. One control is so good that it alone is the next reason I like it. The ISO dial and its implementation. It of course controls the ISO, which by the way can be used insanely high and still produce clean images. Many say the autofocus isn't usable in low light. That's nonsense in my opinion. But note that I like to focus and recompose. I've never been a fan of wide tracking and just spray and pray. That's what the Nikon D4 was meant to do, not this. Back to the ISO dial. When you set the camera in auto ISO using the menu, the dial sets the highest ISO limit as long as it's higher than what you set in the menu. In other words, you can set it to 200 in the menu and voila! a physical control wheel for the auto ISO high cap. That's genius and frankly a bit of a game changer for me when I have used this camera professionally. Fifth and final reason is no shocker, it's the image quality. This has a 16.2 megapixel sensor.
which of course is plentiful. In fact, it's the same sensor as you will find in the high-end and highly acclaimed D4. There is loads of cropping power with still small and easy manageable files. The high ISO capability is partly due to the low megapixel count and it has an insane dynamic range. Not just pushable shadows, but highlights as well. And the colors. Oh man, the colors. The tones in black and whites are also very, very tasty. The only feature I really wish this camera had is the new highlight weighted metering mode that sits in for example the D500. That's it, a price worthy camera with excellent controls that delivers spectacular images. What more can one ask for? And if the price is out of your budget, don't worry, I have some seriously cheap Nikon options coming up. So subscribe for that and follow me on Instagram for new pictures every day. Until next time, goodbye.